June 11, 1997, South Central Iowa. The farming region, rich with crops and livestock, began to stir as dawn became morning. Most farmhands had arrived hours earlier to begin their chores. But one who never missed a shift without calling had failed to show that day. Her boss, a nearby farmer, became worried when he called and got no answer. Since she lived alone, he went to check on her. He noticed her pickup truck wasn't there, and the front door was ajar. Bob. Inside, he found the lifeless body of his farmhand, Barbara Garber. Barbara. Mahaska County Sheriff's Chief Deputy Paul DeGeest responded to the 911 alert. In 20 years of law enforcement, I've been involved with about uh, five or six homicides. So it's not something that happens a whole lot in Oskaloosa, Iowa or Mahaska County. When we went into the living room, we observed Barb Garber's body. Uh, she was sitting upright, fully clothed in a chair. She was leaning over to the left side and there was uh, uh, blood coming from her head. The sheriff called specialists from the Iowa Division of Criminal Investigation to process the scene. The middle-aged woman had been shot four times at close range while she sat in the chair. Technicians recovered 22 caliber shell casings close to the victim. At her feet, they found her half-eaten breakfast. The absence of defensive wounds on the body indicated the farmhand had put up no struggle, according to Iowa Special Agent Michael Barrier. The house uh, did not appear to have any forced entry. Um, it looked like uh, someone had just entered the house, either been let in or had uh, gotten in without having to break in. Uh, the residence had a lived-in look but was not ransacked and there was nothing obviously uh, taken from the residence other than um, her, her vehicle was missing from the driveway. Green pickup truck, the the farmer model. described the victim's vehicle as a late model dark green pickup truck. And that was her personal truck yes. Detectives issued a be on the lookout for the missing truck to all law enforcement in the area. As you were coming down this yeah, road Yeah, coming here. along this road here. Investigators here. spoke to her closest neighbor, who lived a quarter mile down the road. She had noticed something earlier that day when she was on her way to work in the pre-dawn hours. All the way down there. She saw an unfamiliar blue hatchback or station wagon backing out of Mrs. Garber's driveway. But she didn't see who was inside, and she didn't get the license plate. This vehicle was described as a older, not in very good shape, station wagon type vehicle, uh, blue in color. Uh, the vehicle was not a vehicle that had been seen at the Garber residence before and was not really associated with the Garber residence. And so we felt that it may be and probably was a suspect vehicle. As police were talking to the neighbor, an alert came across the police radio. What you got? Okay, I'll be in route. A bank five miles away in the hamlet of Gibson had just been robbed. Deputies from two counties responded. Because deposits are insured by the federal government, the FBI was called in. Yes. The closest field office was 77 miles away in Cedar Rapids. Two males, armed. Okay. All right, we'll be heading right there. Larry, we got a bank robbery in Gibson. Okay. All right. FBI Special Agent Scott French was assigned the case. Two males. Who are they armed with? All right. Bye.
the small savings bank in Gibson had just opened for business for the first time that day to the town's population of 70. Down south here. Right there. It has one paved road to the community of Gibson. The rest of the area is surrounded by farmland with a few gravel roads uh, leading away from the community. It would take Agent French over an hour to get there. Sheriff's deputies arrived first to secure the crime scene and take witness statements. Okay. Bank employees told investigators that the robbery had occurred at about 10 a.m. They had no customers at the time, and there was no guard on duty. Only a teller and the manager were inside when the robbery took place. All right, get your hands up! Hands Two up. armed robbers wearing dark ski masks, gloves, and brown coveralls burst into the bank. One held a shotgun while the other carried a handgun. The robbers scooped stacks of cash and banknotes into plastic trash bags. Come on, hurry up! Let's go! No, up against the wall! Go, go! They had gotten away with $65,000 in cash. 